Good morning once again, everybody, and welcome to the Audible Innovation Cathedral. Thank you for your patience. We're waiting on the queen, and we are ready to get started now. My name is Marcy DePina. I'm the executive director of the Newark City Parks Foundation. I'm going to be your host for today. We are so excited on behalf of our mayor, the Honorable Raj J. Baraka, our city council members, <laughs> director of arts and culture, Fayemi Shakur, the Newark City Parks Foundation, Newark Arts and Audible, welcome, welcome, welcome. This indeed is a incredible day. This to me is the culmination of hundreds of years of history. Our ancestors are looking down at us today. They are smiling and they are saying thank you for carrying this forward. Today we are honoring General Tubman, Araminta Ross, AKA Minty, AKA Harriet Tubman, AKA Moses of her people, a true, true advocate for freedom, American freedom. She has freed, she freed dozens of enslaved Africans, but not only that, she was also a civil war spy and a scout, a nurse, a suffragist, a wife and a mother who in the end of her life opened an elderly care facility. Truly a freedom fighter. And today we not only celebrate her, but we are also celebrating the legacy here in the city of Newark, New Jersey of fighting for freedom and liberation and our contribution to the abolitionist movement. We're situated within the Arts and Education District and it's Women's History Month. Harriet Tubman said, if my services do not place women as a man's equal, what do? Before we get started, I just want to acknowledge a few people that are in the room. Uh, our city of Newark officials, we have our business administrator, Eric Pennington here, Assemblywoman Timberlake, <laughs> Assemblywoman Pinter Marin, and many, many city directors and deputy mayors here that are with us today. We also want to say a special thanks to Audible, the whole team, Aisha Glover, Manny Antunes, the studios team led by Nick D'Angelo, which worked tirelessly on the audio on this monument. This is indeed a glorious day. We're gonna start with a video so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'd like to introduce the video, it's called The Making of the Tubman Monument and it was directed, directed and produced by Dreamplay Media.
<laughs> the amount of hard work you just got to witness it that has gone into this project. It's been over two years in the making, and I've person personally witnessed everybody roll up their sleeves and get the job done. Our next uh, person that's going to be coming up is none other than Audible's CEO. In January of 2020, Bob Carrigan joined Audible as CEO. He has spent decades at the forefront of business and entertainment. Bob's visionary contributions earned him the prestigious Ernst & Young Master Entrepreneur of the Year Award for New Jersey. And he was appointed by President Obama to serve on the National Security Telecommunications Advisory Committee. Everybody, please join me in welcoming to the stage, Bob Carrigan. Well, thank you, Marcy, and uh, welcome. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for being here today. Uh, we are here to celebrate the unveiling of the Harriet Tubman Monument, Shadow of a Face, which honors Harriet Tubman's life and work as a freedom fighter, and also Newark's place in that fight for freedom and liberation. Thank you. Audible, as a home to storytellers, is incredibly proud to bring these important stories to life in the monument's immersive audio installation. So as we gather to recognize our collective history, I'd be remiss not to talk about the cathedral we're in right now and the significant role it played in serving the people of Newark. Over several decades, this edifice has been an important source of comfort and care for the community. It's been a gathering place. It's been home to a beloved nonprofit that distributed food and offered education and daycare. In fact, we are in the second, yes. So in fact, we are in the second Presbyterian church, which is just a few blocks from the historic old first Presbyterian church, which was a stop on the Underground Railroad that enabled so many to escape to freedom. Yes. And members of that congregation broke off to form the building that we are in today. So with the unveiling of the Harriet Tubman Monument this morning, we tell a more complete account of history. And we at Audible are extremely honored to play a small role in that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. I want to acknowledge uh, some of the supporters. Without these folks, this would not have been possible. Bloomberg Associates for your tireless work in working with our director, Fayemi Shakur, the Mellon Foundation for their support, and also the Newark Public Library. Also would like to acknowledge our first lady, Mrs. Linda Baraka, and our first baby here. As well as I see many of our council members here as well, Councilman Council, Councilman Crump, Councilwoman Reverend Roundtree, and I'm sorry if I missed anybody else. This is a room full of just amazingly beautiful people. Ah, Assemblywoman Cleopatra Tucker, thank you for being here. <laughs> Newark has never been more vibrant and dynamic than it is right now. If you look around, you can feel it. it's palatable. Everywhere you look, the city is bursting with life, with growth, with positivity and greater prosperity and deeper, more meaningful justice. Why? Why is this happening? Because of the vision, the wisdom, and the compassion of our next speaker, the man who has welcomed the spirit and the strength of Harriet Tubman right into the heart of our city, the city of Newark. Please, everybody, put your hands together for the Honorable Mayor Raz J. Baraka. Please sit down, please. You're scaring me. Uh, 
obviously, I just want to start by thanking a few people that obviously uh, need to be thanked for the work that they've done to make this a reality. And uh, it's fitting that, you know, the history was told about this edifice, this building, uh, the Second Presbyterian Church, and then the home of the women that supported the Million Man March that we are unveiling a Harriet Tubman monument. It's not a statue for the press who keep asking me about the statue. It's a monument. I want to thank Fayemi Shakur first. And, uh, I think it's important that we thank her because she's had her own personal ordeal, her own personal journey she's been going through, fighting her way through it. Uh, just wanted to know, she's, she, and I'm sure she does, that she's not alone in that struggle, but she saw this through to the end, and a lot of people appreciate that. And I, I appreciate it personally, and I just want you to know that. Uh, obviously, I want to thank Aisha Glover and Audible. Um, for partnering with us and making sure that we continued and had the resources to march this thing all the way down to the end. Uh, Don, thank you wherever you are. You know you're somewhere. There you go. Appreciate you, sir. Um, the artist, Nina Cook John. Amazing, 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 amazing. And because of her, it's not a statue, right? Yeah. A amazing work. Uh, the incredible uh, and enormously talented and beautiful Queen Latifah. Yeah. Who put our stamp on this, which is gonna make this thing even live further than we've even imagined and bring more attention to this than, than uh, you know, we even thought of. And we appreciate her always coming back and loving us the way we love her as well. Uh, and I, I wanna thank the governor's office, the administration, uh, our first lady that's of, over our state, Tammy Murphy, who's here with us as well who's always a partner for us. So let, let me, I have an assignment, so I'm sorry everybody else I forgot to mention, I love you too. Protocols have already been established. Uh, and so let me get to my assignment, just so people uh, who will know that I do know history a little bit. Uh, we acknowledge that around June sometime in 1775 that George Washington came through here on his way to Cambridge one of his few stops in Newark. They say that he stayed at a tavern on Broad and William Street and that he traveled with soldiers down Broad and then ferry on his way to cross to Passaic. And we also know that the next time that he would come here was in retreat to recover and regroup. That eventually, in my estimation, may have pre preserved him and the troops for a victory that was coming soon thereafter. We also know that in 1775, during Washington's first visit here, at least 90% of Africans in the colonies were slaves. We also know that during his second visit, 90% of Africans in the colonies were still slaves. We also <laughs> know that at the close of the Revolutionary War or the War for Independence, that 90% of the Africans in the young United States were still slaves, which prompted Frederick Douglass's speech in Rochester what to the slave is the meaning of the 4th of July. We know that Newark and New Jersey was a dangerous place at that time and that legal slavery had not ended until almost 100 years after the War for Independence. Just to put that in perspective, Ghana just celebrated its flag raising, its independence, which was only 66 years ago. We also know that Christopher Columbus is beloved by many. He sailed the ocean blue. We know that early European sailors were looking for ways to experience the gold, the spices, and riches in lands far, far east, that the Portuguese were some of the first to sail around Africa's Cape of Good Hope, trying to avoid the Mediterranean. 
and that Columbus had an idea, not a new one, but an idea that was finally financed by the Spanish, Isabel and Ferdinand, to go on his journey east in the opposite direction. Believing wrongly that the earth was smaller than anticipated, he ended up probably in San Salvador. He sailed across what we know as the Caribbean to Haiti and Dominican Republic. He never found what he was looking for, but his diaries tell us and were very clear. He spoke of what he saw and encountered, but most salient he spoke of the natives there and gave reasons as to why enslaving them was a good idea. But today is not their stories. Today is our stories. By God's grace, we don't require your enslavement at the price for our freedom. In fact, someone has already paid that price. Our ability to be here this day, renaming this park and erecting this monument, someone paid a steep and heavy price a long time ago. We don't require you not to celebrate Washington or Columbus even. We will not impede upon your desire to lift them up and praise them. All we ask is that you not require us to do the same. We have our own heroes and sheroes, our own story, a journey that is particular to us and one that is particular to the evolution of this country that allows us all to experience the warmth and security of democracy. But this day is not about them or conquerors or conquest. It's not about exceptionalism and purity or preserving the past at the cost of history. Today is our day. It's about us on the outskirts of freedom with a rock and a slingshot. Our journey in a promised land with nothing but faith in the North Star. It's about backwoods prayer meetings and songs that hit our scent from dogs on the hunt. It is our day, this moment, this monument is about us, that in our story, Moses is a black woman. Ragged, clothes with a Bible and a shotgun. She parted our Red Sea for us and marched through terror and hatred and as, as herself, a real person, not fiction or some make-believe Marvel superhero. She went and got us over and over and over again. It's about the old First Presbyterian Church and abolitionists that risked their lives in the backdrop of independence songs in a state that was the last to let go of human bondage. This is our story at the crossroads of Black History and Women's History Month. We celebrate Harriet as we celebrate ourselves, but more importantly, we celebrate democracy and understanding that the greatness of this country lives in Harriet's footsteps to freedom, in her sleeping sickness, in her spells, in her dreams, that America can only claim exceptionalism because Harriet lived. Today we say no one owns the sky, that it belongs to us all. And what we are doing today is not erasing history, but completing it. We are not demeaning other people's stories. We're telling our own. And the world, from our point of view, is scary only to those that despise justice. Today, today we celebrate Armanita Ross. We celebrate Minty, Harriet Tubman, Moses, an army veteran, a cook, a nurse, a scout, a leader of troops, an abolitionist, an enslaved African who escaped long before the first shots at Fort Sumter, who gave Lincoln the courage to sign the Emancipation Proclamation, <laughs> whose story made its way to Newark to inspire millions to love freedom and democracy more than they are afraid of those in power. Godspeed to all of you. Thank you for coming here. Long live Harriet Tubman and long live Nina Cook John. Thank you. I'm sorry, I had to get that off. My real assignment is to give a proclamation to <laughs> Michelle Jones Galvin, who is an ancestor of Harriet Tubman, <laughs> who is with us and lives with us today. It's a long uh, proclamation here, but 
you know, just the last part of it. I uh, salute Michelle Jones Galvin as the city of Newark unveils a monument today that honors Harriet Tubman, the abolitionist efforts before the Civil War, the black liberation movement since. Thank her for joining us and wish her joy and success in the future. And today, we remember Michelle Jones Galvin because we remember Harriet Tubman. And we uplift and praise her as well. God bless you. I think the mayor thought he was going to sit right down, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to gift him a book called Beyond the Underground, Aunt Harriet, Moses of Her People, which was written by myself and my mom. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So our next speaker is truly a force. Women are leading in this city and it's really beautiful to see. Uh, she is not only our council president, but she is a tireless advocate, not only for resources for the community, but for women, for people of color. And I call her from time to time and she's, she's always there. She's also a board member for the Newark City Parks Foundation. Please everybody join me in welcoming to the podium our council president, LaMonica McIver. So, um, I don't know who did the program, sending me up after the mayor or any of us. <laughs> I always say this, you know, he's the closer and the finisher, but we're excited to be here today with Audible. The one thing I will say is Audible definitely knows how to put on a production. I see many of you with coffee cups and water, and hopefully you enjoyed the um, refreshments they had. It's always a great time to come here. So thank you, Don, and the entire Audible team, to Aisha um, for hosting us today. Um, it's an honor for me to be here. I think we were here less than a year ago, actually breaking ground and renaming Washington Park um, right outside, it was it was warmer, um, and it was actually my birthday, and we were um, renaming the park. Um, and all of the things that we went through to get to that point last year, when I spoke about people who were trying to stop us from doing this, from all of the calls, all of the negativity, um, it was it was really a hard push to make this happen. And it wouldn't have happened without the courageousness of our mayor, the determination of our mayor to make this happen, along with all of the folks that got us to this point to actually do this. Um, but just to get to that point was very difficult. I um, mean, a lot of people don't know about that, but all of us behind the scenes that had to deal with it, to had to push and you know, fight back about us, really, as the senator just said, um, not just tell our own story, but tell the truth. Uh, was very difficult. And so I'm just proud to be here today and happy to be here, um, you know, with us finally being able to see this amazing monument. I mean, to Nina Cook, John, oh my God, it's just, it's breathtaking to everyone that helped put this together, to all of the contributors, to everyone, to everyone that helped with the financing, to the state of New Jersey, to Audible, to everyone. Um, really, it is just so beautiful. I can't wait to, uh, for us to get outside and see it and also to see it at night. Um, and so definitely it's just it's just breathtaking to be here in this place. I uh, want to thank my colleagues who were here today, some of them that were mentioned, but I'm going to mention some of them again. Uh, Councilman Council from the South Ward, uh, Councilman at Large Larry Crump, Councilwoman at Large Louise Scott Roundtree, East Ward Councilman, uh, Councilman Mike Silva, as well as Councilman of the West Ward, uh, Dupre Kelly, who's here with us today celebrating this um, event. That's all that I can see. If I don't see you, blame my glasses, not my heart. Um, but we are definitely excited um, about today. Um, as I mentioned, less than a year ago, we were renaming the park. Um, and today we get to unveil the Harriet Tubman Monument in Tubman Square. In Tubman Square. Honoring the city's role in the Underground Railroad and the great work, great work and heroism of Harriet Tubman on this very land, 
Thanks to our, once again, fearless mayor and the support of Newark Municipal Council, Council for making this happen. Thank you, special thanks for always to Nina Cook John. Everybody in Newark and beyond will always remember Nina Cook John. Um, and th thank you for that. Uh, Newark continues to set the standard. There's no secret about the work that we do here in the city underneath the great leadership of our mayor. Um, and hopefully it's a standard across the country, especially as we see uh, states banning African-American studies and literature all around. Hopefully it is something that folks can take, you know, a, a tip out of a book about us here in Newark um, because we are setting the standard and hopefully folks can, you know, see that here. It's not just about negativity, but it's about the great things that we're doing here in the city. City, um, using art to promote change, truth telling, and innovation. That's what we do here in the city of Newark. So once again, thank you to all that made this possible. Um, I'm just looking forward to getting out there and for everyone to see this. The one thing I want to say to Newarkers and folks beyond, but I'm speaking specifically to Newarkers, this is for us. This is for us. Tubman Square is for us. This monument is for us. I tell you to bring your children, bring your family, tell those that are far and beyond, come to Newark to see the Harriet Tubman Monument and Harriet Tubman Square. So thank you all and God bless you. Thank you, Council President. Our next speaker was here last year on Juneteenth when uh, Washington Park was renamed to Harriet Tubman Square Park and has really been a supporter from the beginning. She's on the ground, she takes the time out to listen to people firsthand. Her focus on education and climate change, women and minority business owners, as well as providing support for New Jersey mothers and helping to reduce maternal and infant mortality. She's a force and she is our first lady of the state of New Jersey. Everybody please welcome our first lady, Tammy Murphy. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Marcy, for that introduction. Um, it really was an honor to be here last June at the dedication of the park, and now I am grateful to be back again to witness the unveiling of the Harriet Tubman Monument. Um, I want to thank the mayor, Roz Baraka, uh, for welcoming us to Newark, as well as for his leadership and partnership. Um, I also want to recognize uh, Senator Teresa Ruiz, uh, and the legendary Queen Latifah. <laughs> uh, all of today's special guests, um, most especially the one who finds this moment the most meaningful, Jua. Just want to say, Linda. <laughs> um, and also, of course, my dear friend and the founder of Audible, uh, Don Katz. There are many brilliant voices here with us today who I know will speak powerfully about the legacy that Harriet Tubman has left us Americans. Uh, to those testimonies, I would like to add this. There is nothing to be gained from hiding from our history. There is nothing patriotic in looking away from our nation's original sin. On the contrary, it is only through facing the truth together that we can find a way forward. And there is always a way forward. This statue reminds us of that truth, as does the partnership between the city of Newark and Audible in sharing the story of Harriet Tubman's life and work and Newark's role in black liberation. The power and importance of storytelling is something shared by every culture around the world. It is how we learn, share, and inspire. And I am incredibly proud that New Jersey, here, we are lifting stories like this one up. Here through Audible's incredibly innovative approach and in our public education system through the expansion of AP level 
African American Studies courses in our high schools. I, I know my husband was here just last month to uh, make that announcement together with the mayor. Um, and mayor, I look forward to learning more about your father through the course of that, uh, of that, of those teachings. Um, there is no question that we have work to do to build a New Jersey that offers opportunity equally to every community. But we are on the path forward through ethical and progressive public policy, as well as through a powerful cultural movement. Likewise, Audible has shown us that good corporate citizenship is not only possible, but it's tangible. And today, I am grateful to be reminded and inspired by the story of one of the many trailblazers who risked everything to set us on this path of progress. I want to thank all those who worked to bring all aspects of this project to life. I have no doubt that the statue and the story it tells will inspire generations to come, and hopefully be one of the many stops on the Black Heritage Trail. I thank you all. Thank you, First Lady Murphy. I want to just acknowledge a few other folks that will not be speaking today but are in the room. The chairman of the New Jersey Democratic State Committee and Essex County Democratic Committee, Leroy Jones. We also have a representative here in the house with us from Congressman Robert Menendez's office. And also want to acknowledge New Jersey Transit and their staff led by Justin Davis. The powerful women continue. Our next speaker, I had the pleasure of hearing her yesterday at NJPAC Women. She is another force of nature. The first Puerto Rican elected to New Jersey State Senate with five reelections. She fights for equity in education, expanding employment for underserved communities. She's an advocate for women and mothers and She's one of us. Please welcome to the stage New Jersey Senator M. Teresa Ruiz. Good afternoon, Nork. So it's so many things have been said, and I'll try to condense them as I repeat them over and over again because they need to be repeated. But the one thing I want to start with is that any day that we get an opportunity to celebrate the greatest, the largest, the most epic city, the one that my father, not knowing probably where it was on the map when he was figuring out where he was gonna improve the quality of life for the next generation of family members that he didn't even have in his family. When he came from Puerto Rico, he said, I'm going to the city of Newark. So any day we're celebrating Brick City is a day of hope, it's a day of faith, and it's a day of love. But more importantly, today is a day of antithesis. We are doing the complete opposite of what is happening across this country. When men want to tell women what to do with my uterus, Nork is standing up and saying we are celebrating women who were leading and setting an agenda for women, for men, for everyone. When people want to rip pages out of history books, we are etching it in stone, so try ripping that out. that I only had a small part in this because I was able to secure with my colleagues $2 million for this project, and I'm embarrassed when I say that, right? It's only $2 million. This is what happens when you deal with a multi-million dollar budget, because I know a $2 million check to me would be quite big, but that we secure, secure $2 million, and I want to give it up to Assemblywoman Shanique Spate, who's not here in Trent, and my other partner, uh, Assemblywoman Eliana Pintormarin, Assemblywoman Cleopatra Tucker, and Assemblywoman Brittany Timberlake, and if you didn't notice, they're all women. <laughs> that I had the power to do that. 
because when the budget was being struck, I wasn't outside of the office, I was inside trying to scoop up every single penny that I could bring back home. And the other great antithesis of today is that you see the corporate sector not functioning through a financial lens, but through a cultural and community component. That Audible time and time again has demonstrated that the bottom dollar doesn't have to be just about that. That the bottom dollar is about the people that they serve and live alongside of. That nestled right here in front of Harriet Tubman Square Park is the most quintessential space, I feel like, when you're entering downtown. The Nork Museum. The corporate sector scattered all over the place. Schools. And a great reminder, if I'm stuck in traffic, to sit in front of this phenomenal breathing monument, because that's what it is. It has breath to it, if you haven't seen it, to remind me not to be tired, to remind me that there is great work to be done, to remind me that when I'm on the turnpike cursing quite often, <laughs> that I have to clean it up before I go under that golden dome and to continue to fight for the next generation so that they understand that in truth there is prosperity, that in education in the classrooms outside of any zip code that we can lift up the God-given potential of any human being despite where they live, what community block they're on and what school they go to if we just make the common sense investments early on. And today, all of that comes into fruition and encompasses it in the story of Harriet Tubman, a woman, a fearless leader, a phenomenon, a legendary queen, that we lift her up in this space consistently. And I just cannot wait for the moment to bring Silver to the park and have her look at that and ask me questions and to give her the truth. And to remind her that so many people in this room that she will stand on shoulders of will have made it easier for her, but that her struggle will still probably remain the same. That her grandmother had more rights as a woman in this country than she has today. That the legacy of Harriet Tubman and that fight of bringing so many with her is still the purpose of any individual, whether we are elected, whether we are the CEO of a company, whether we're a teacher, where, whether we're leading cultural institutions, that it is part of our human responsibility, our moral compass to understand that if the person next to me is bleeding, then damn it, you're bleeding too. And so I will give a debt of gratitude to everybody, and not because it's Women's History Month am I doing in this order, because in fair game and no shame, I would probably list all the women first any single day of the year to Miss Nina Cook-John, who I had the honor of listening to yesterday and just meeting for the first time and hugging and embracing, I'm a hugger, just to be in awe of the love and the faith that was poured into you so that you can pour into so many future generations that will take an opportunity to see and witness and learn. Thank you. <laughs> to Council President LaMonica MacGyver, a fearless advocate, and I know they read the titles. Everybody always forgets the one title. We are badass mamas, too, in this space, right? And I know that's the one that she loves the best for her leadership. To Linda Harrison, who consistently, when she took over the museum, was always talking about making this an inclusive space and re-energizing a park to be sure that it that you could feel it and that is happening uh, to to Fayemi Shakur who I first met when we started making investments over at Symphony Hall and her love for people and her love for art is extraordinary thank you I love you and I'm with you to the First Lady Tammy Murphy of the Garden State, thank you for being here instead of Phil today. <laughs> to the Queen, when we were waiting downstairs, I said, you know, we're a little bit behind schedule, and they're like, we're waiting for the Queen. I said, well, as well we should, you know. 
who never forgets that Brick City gave her the power and the purpose, and she always comes back, even when COVID was at its height. She came to Essex County College, she vaccinated herself and used that moment to educate others so that we were protected at a time when we were so afraid of what was going on. Thank you for not ever forgetting what your purpose is and for using, oh yes. And she is rocking a tie to today. This is lovely. Hers is nicer than mine, I'm sure. And of course, in the mix of all the roses, I will give a debt of gratitude to someone who I consider a brother, a partner, a colleague, my mayor, my daughter's mayor, my mother's mayor, Mayor Roz Baraka. But let's not get it twisted. I know his inspiration and his hope and his purpose is always fired up because of Linda. <laughs> Harriet Tubman said, always remember you have within you the strength. Always remember that. And I try to tell my daughter that when she goes off to school, you're the slayer of, of, of tests. You're the queen of questions. I said, you can do this. Remember that you have the patience and I say this to myself, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world, each one of us in here, whatever we do, if we just take a moment to pat someone on the back and say, are you okay, is a moment of human decency and is lifting up the world in a small way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Ruiz. Up next, we're going to have a video message from our Senator Cory Booker, who is a advocate for environmental and social justice. I personally have worked with him on Newark Riverfront Park, so I know his heart. He is committed to parks and public spaces. Now we'll have a video, video from Senator Cory Booker. Hello, everyone. This is tremendous. I give you greetings as you celebrate one of America's greatest heroes, one of my greatest heroes with this monument that pays tribute to her. Mayor Baraka, you know, man, how excited I was by your leadership. Nina Cook-John, thank you. Don Katz, my brother from another mother, thank you. And to all the civic leaders who made this moment possible, I'm, I'm deeply moved. From the Newark Museum of Art, the Newark Public Library, the Newark City Parks Foundation, so many other of our institutions who contributed to this monument, thank you, thank you, and the community. Your support, your determination led to this day. This monument will spark appreciation for a woman who defined courage and a humble, powerful radicalism based in the, the fundamental ideals of love. It, it should inspire all of us to action. It should inspire all of us to love our country, not through what we say or the symbols, but through what we do. Now, I know there's a lot of talk about monuments in America. They've not always represented the rich history and tapestry of our country. They've not already always been representative of the heroes of our past. But Newark, New Jersey, I'm proud. I'm proud that Newark today is standing at the forefront of elevating heroes from communities that have been, that have been too long overlooked, of pointing to patriots who served and sacrificed, of making sure that the children of today know they stand on the shoulders of giants like Harriet Tubman. I tell you this, Harry Tubman's statue has sat on my desk almost my entire time in public office, from the mayor's office in Newark to the Senate office in Washington, D.C. This, to me, has been the symbol. But think how I feel now when Mayor Baraka and community leaders took a small statue, which I love, and elevated it to a monument for all of our community. This is Harriet Tubman a woman that faced disrespect, disregard, denigration, and violence. She faced starvation and the predation of 
dogs and people literally hunting for her, and yet she was tireless, indefatigable. She was a person who never gave up on America when America refused to even see her humanity. She was someone who, in so many ways, but metaphorically, <laughs> helped us all to understand that we have to make the journey. We've picked up the torch in our generation. We are being led forth by North Stars in our community and North Stars like her from our history. May we now, from this inspiration, from the rich history of a woman whose history is interwoven with the history of New Jersey, may we now continue the journey, inspired by heroes of the past, so that we too can make it to the promised land. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Newark. Thank you, Newark Arts community. Thank you, Audible. Thank you, everyone. And congratulations on this powerful moment. It will inspire all of us and generations yet unborn. Thank you, Senator Booker. Now, time for a little bit of art. We have in our midst lots of artists I see. I see Mickey Taylor here. I see designer Marco Hall. I see Michelle Black. I see Linda Street. There's so many, I can't even name you all. Thank you be for being here. This city is overflowing with creativity, of course, led by our very own artist, Mayor. Our next presenter is a poet. She's a multidisciplinary artist. She's Newark-based, but she represents Nigeria. A poet, a filmmaker, and photographer. Please, everybody, welcome to the podium, Bimpe Fageyembo. to be closer to the mic, hold on. You are a fight so worthy that one woman would risk freedom for freedom. This young woman who was counted out and scarred, marked with a scar on the head, perhaps a symbol, a sign of a sixth sense, the kind of sense so divinely foolish it was wisdom. I mean, she couldn't read a map, but she could read the heavens. And well, who needs a map when the stars answer to you? Araminta Ross knew how to be abased and knew when it was time to abound. She, one young black woman, but a majority. Set out as Araminta came back a Moses because that's what freedom will do. It will call you by a new name. So this majority walked Maryland to Delaware, 197 miles. Delaware to Pennsylvania, 94 miles. That's 291 miles from who you thought I was to who I say I am. Right. Harriet Tubman fought a fight so worthy she would risk freedom for freedom. She held both Minty and Harriet in the palm of each hand, put them together and prayed her way through pitch black valleys, shadows, death, rivers, rivers as deep as the many souls we've lost in water. Don't you know that every ocean floor from here to Africa carries the souls of our family's past? Araminta Ross walked through waters, baptized with each step, one step closer, one step closer to the freedoms that she said that she would die to see. One step closer to Harriet, because God, it's not how you start the race, it's how you finish it. Araminta started it, but Harriet, Harriet would be the one to finish it, but I think she was always Harriet, if you understand what I'm saying. Jesus didn't become the Messiah until he rose, but he was always the Messiah. 
So she went on to make it or die, to remain or to become. She knew that there was a home for her, and that home was not where she was going, but rather what she could be when she got there. But not alone. A woman who would risk her freedom for yours. So she went back, back to Egypt, no less than 13 times, because she knew that what God could do once could be done twice. A fight so worthy that she would risk freedom for freedom again and again. Harriet Tubman didn't know what would become of black liberty, but she left a legacy that told us that in our lifetime that we are worthy of the fight. And I know that we are treading on hope and the water feels low from Emmett Till to Tyree Nichols. But in our lifetimes, we are still worthy of the fight. She left us a legacy that told us. She left us a legacy that told us that you must live like you have the right to. A, free, a fight that is so worthy that you too would risk freedom for freedom. A people so worthy, a people so worthy. A people so worthy, a people so worthy. A people so worthy, a people so worthy of a fight that yes, it may last a lifetime. And yet while you fight, you better live like you have the right to. Thank you. Thank you, Ben Barry. Now we are running a little bit behind, so we're gonna try to speed up our program here. Our next presenter has also been working tirelessly. She is the CEO of the Newark Museum of Art, which for over 100 years has been a part of this here neighborhood, this square, this historic location, this historic district. She has completely, along with her team, changed the perception of the Newark Museum of Art and welcomed Newarkers into the museum in a way that I have never seen in my entire time living in this city. It's really beautiful to witness. She's been a partner from the beginning, and the museum has been a partner from the beginning on this project. Please help me to welcome to the podium the CEO of the Newark Museum of Art, Linda C. Harrison. Well, you know, it's just about this time that um, my grandmother would say, you need some participation. So you're gonna have to repeat after me. You ready? I love art. I simply love and I love my freedom. And I love my freedom. And what a beautiful day. Um, I've been taking it all in. How lucky we are to be here listening to the ardent words of Bimpe across from Harriet Tubman Square. I like for us to acknowledge that this historic public space sits on the unceded indigenous land of the Muncie Lenape people. <laughs> And today, and today, as we confront and celebrate our community histories, it's important that we spotlight those perspectives and stories of African American and indigenous people that still remain untold. We are so, so proud of the artist and architect Nina Cook John won, that she won this competition for this monument, honoring abolitionist Harriet Tubman in Newark's Harriet Tubman Square. In a word or two, she brought the creative thunder, and we love her for it. A future 
she's a future forward architectural um, uh, design that combined with a robust combination of community created tile works and uh, the audio component of the queen herself have been integrated into this monument. This square is one of the many touchstones of our city's history, our culture, and community. And we at the Newark Museum of Art are honored to be a part of this exciting moment, both for our neighborhood and also for our community, memorializing the important legacy of Harriet Tubman. Many of the Underground Railroad stations resided in New Jersey, and at least one was here in Newark. And therefore, today's act of us gathering, witnessing, and learning as a community feels as urgent as ever. It is why we as neighbors must continue to celebrate and spotlight contemporary cultural anchors like Nina Cook John, as well as the memory of historical cultural figures who uh, have helped us forge a better path for us through their courage and their resilience. Places of gathering such as this square and vital are vital for our city because they allow us to commune with each other in the present moment as well as with our nuanced collective histories. Harriet Tubman Square is a way of foregrounding under-recognized histories of African Americans and abolitionists who played a role in the quest for liberation and justice in these United States. Addressing history's violent erasures through public art will undoubtedly ensure that we forge a better way forward and that we are able to celebrate and include the kaleidoscope of perspectives that exist and have always existed within our community today and in the future. So this is one of the reasons why the Newark Museum of Art is incredibly proud to be part of this moment, which not only uplifts the wonderful Nina Cook John, we can't say that name enough, right? But also allows our city's creative luminaries to collaborate with our community and leave their own footprint. Monuments serve as reminders that history is not just in the books, but all around us. I hope that visitors will be inspired to be courageous and work to achieve social change. This unveiling, alongside the opening of the museum's newly reinstalled Seeing America 18th and 19th century galleries, both serve as a reminder of why we as a city and as neighbors must continue to venerate the cultural memory of these individuals, their courage, and their stories, while also welcoming in the voices and talents among our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Our next presenter is our woman of the hour. She is the artist and architect, the designer of our Harriet Tubman monument, Shadow of a Face. Her perseverance, her courage, her creativity, her passion, and her desire to tell the story of black liberation was felt by everyone who she touched throughout this project. In many ways, the journey that she's experienced in making this mirrored the journey of Harriet Tubman, and indeed, She's bringing our ancestors along with her in the creation of this monument. So please, everybody, welcome Nina Cook John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to those of you who believed in my vision for reimagining what a monument could be like. What a monument could look like, feel like, and sound like. How a monument could be a living space connecting the stories of the past 
to the stories of today. Connecting the history of Harriet Tubman and Newark's Underground Railroad with the people of Newark in the present, dreaming themselves into a future in which they are fully recognized. Thank you to everyone involved in this monumental undertaking. This commission has meant a lot to me as an artist, as an architect, as a woman, and as a mother of black girls. It means a lot to me, not only because it provided me with the opportunity to create art in public space, telling the multi-layered story of a powerhouse of a woman, revealing the depth and strength of the network of the many people of Newark who gave their time, skills, and resources to support the efforts of abolition and beyond. But also because in the process, it connected me to the makers who gave their craftsmanship, to the institutions who lent their partnership, and to the people of Newark who shared their personal stories of liberation with me, one at a time, over the course of the past year. Harriet Tubman is larger than life. Her courage, tenacity, and achievements across multiple terrains is unparalleled. Her humanity in continuing to support the liberated in day-to-day -day life is grounding. Her face emerging from the shadows of the deep woods or from the desolation of the daily grind would have been a welcome vision to those seeking to make a new life for themselves. This is not a legend. It is about a legacy. Shadow of a Face is dedicated to the women of Newark. I see you. You know who you are. You might not all be in this room today, but I see you. Some of you are pushers, working from behind, helping those who want the limelight. Some of you are pullers, reaching back for those who move just a little bit slowly. You sit by bedsides in hospitals, keep our children on track, and clean up the detritus of our lives so that we can step out unobstructed. Your stories are embedded here alongside the stories of Harriet Tubman. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. So we do have a special guest, which you've already met, that's here with us. We are truly honored to have the great, great, great grandniece of Harriet Tubman, Michelle Jones Galvin, who's here, is going to say just a few words for us. So please, everybody, give her a nice Newark welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for that kind introduction, Marcy. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to be here with all of you this afternoon. I do want to give my special thanks to the Honorable Mayor Raz Baraka and his staff for the invitation to be here today to share my reflections about our beloved Aunt Harriet. It is also an honor to share this moment and space with the other speakers. Of course, Marcy DePina, New York, I'm sorry, New Jersey Senator M. Teresa Ruiz, Senator Cory Booker, monument artist and architect Nina Cook, John, Bimbe Fagayimbu, Linda Harrison, Don Katz, and the illustrious Queen Latifah. And I would be remiss this afternoon if I did not acknowledge my sister, Adrienne Jones Roderick, who accompanied me <laughs> on my travels here today. We know throughout American history there have been women who have made an indelible mark on it, each in her own way, leaving an imprint of her values, her strength, and her hopes for the future and all of its possibilities. 
This afternoon, we commemorate one of these women. She is a woman of history. Many call her an American heroine. In our family, we simply refer to her as Aunt Harriet. She is Harriet Tubman, greatest conductor of the Underground Railroad. Aunt Harriet said, I reasoned this out in my mind. There was one of two things I had a right to, liberty or death. If I could not have one, I would have the other, and no man should take me alive. She said I should fight for my liberty as long as my strength lasted. And when the time came for me to go, the Lord would let them take me. And of course, we know she lived to be <laughs> to the great old age of 92. <laughs> Harriet herself said, slavery was like hell. But one wonders whether Aunt Harriet attained the freedom that she dreamed of and hoped for. You know, it's quite amazing what hope does for the human spirit. Beyond all sacrifices, obstacles, tragedies, hard work, and hurt, Aunt Harriet still hoped for, lived for, and strived for that which we all want, life, liberty, and personal happiness. Hope allowed her to imagine and envision a future of freedom, human equality, human rights, civil rights, dignity, and respect for every American. So let's forever remember Harriet Tubman for her compassion, courage, bravery, service to others, her patriotism, and her commitment to faith, family, fortitude, and freedom. And in the spirit of Harriet Tubman, I know that the monument that we are about to unveil will memorialize her heroism, will inspire future generations to take action when they see injustice, and to instill the value of the service that is needed for the most vulnerable of our society. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones-Galvin. We're so honored to have you here and so grateful that you are here today in our presence. I just want to make one more acknowledgement to Zola Mashariki, who is the head of Audible Studios. Thank you so much for your work on this project. Our next speaker is none other than Audible founder, Don Katz who has led the company from an idea, simply an idea, in 1995, creating and driving a media category and serving tens of millions of listeners by the day in 47 different languages. He has imbued the company and its culture with distinctive guiding principles that have helped propel Audible into the global media mainstream as they also put Audible at the forefront of Newark's comeback since moving the company's world headquarters here to the city in 2007. Please welcome our host, Don Katz. Thank you, thank you, and, uh, and welcome everyone. So I talk, got to talk to Nina Cook John the other day, and it was such a pleasure to hear her describe her vision and purpose as she designed the monument and helped shepherd it through fabrication. I heard that each of the artists and artisans building their respective parts of the structure said they had never been more challenged to create at this level. And Nina talked about the role and responsibility of public art and its capacity to bring people together, which to Nina meant that in approaching an American superhero like Harriet Tubman, someone who lived such a real life, rife with courageous struggle over much of a century. 
the experience for visitors needed to speak to them in their own lives. I immediately thought of how my mentor, Ralph Ellison, would have admired Nina's effort to humanize and go deep into Tubman's complex realities. In many ways, Audible is the house that Ralph built because it was his beliefs about the suppressed realities of the oral and vernacular storytelling traditions that inspired Audible's effort to buck a calcified literary status quo and propel the power and the music in well-composed and artfully performed words into the media mainstream. Ralph taught me that our early cultural gatekeepers, like Ben Franklin, Noah Webster, did not want the linguistic vernacular of the way Americans told stories and bragged and lamented in the fields to disrupt the text-based culture from England. Harriet Tubman could only live in the world of real American storytelling because she didn't read or write. She was also someone who would not accept the world as it was. She followed her vision of what ought to be across a rich life full of experiences well beyond shepherding her family and others to freedom. I think that the physical honoring of Ralph Ellison back there inside the Innovation Cathedral and Nina's powerful monument, a stone's throw away in the park, tell profound stories. Audible came to embrace Newark without any government incentive 16 years ago. I believe Audible is a better business, a better place to work, and a better service giving voice to those who ought to have a voice because of principles that call for something better. Audible's programmatic efforts have endeavored to give unfairly deprived people a chance to help fight against the dire health and education and social justice outcomes that are the all too pervasive results of asset and income disparities in Newark and other cities. Shadow of a Face is just one step forward toward a fully renovated park, and there is much more work to be done. I hope that a fully fitted out Tubman Square draws company workers, including Audible's, back to resume a Newark Renaissance set back by COVID in ways that unequally hammered residents of too many New Jersey cities with challenges similar to Newark's. Newark Venture Partners was founded to nurture vibrant new companies that can draw the amazing Newark-born and educated talent back to be part of a better future. It was nine years ago that I sat between Rutgers Newark Chancellor Nancy Cantor and another mentor and Newark icon, the late Clement Price. At commencement ceremonies, as one first-generation degree getter after another from every background imaginable walked by, I said to Nancy and Clem, these folks will go out from here and create vast, potentially redistributable wealth. We have to create more reasons for them to stay. And this became a guiding vision of the possible for Newark Venture Partners. Thank you to so many Audible people and allies who, who work to give voice to this amazing monument. And speaking of allies, speaking of voices that have marked the soundscape of the culture by force of so much talent and charismatic presence, it is now my pleasure to introduce Queen Latifah. <laughs> As you'll shortly hear, her voice is, is, you will hear emanating from this monument. In, in the fall of 2019, I was able to spend time in California and then here at the cathedral with Dana Owens, Queen Latifah, and her business partner and creative partner, the talented uh, Shekim Kumper. Uh, talk about someone who has challenged the status quo and worked Harriet Tubman hard to go where others don't go. Many people possessed of Dana's raw talent, were expected to stay in prescribed artistic lanes, but Queen Latifah has made her mark within, artist, within artistic formats and across them as few others have. Dana did not accept the world as it was, and she acted upon this versus issuing statements. Just listen to the message in the rap song Unity from 1993. Or, or check out the amount of money she raised hosting AIDS dance marathons in the 1990s. Or have a binge evening watching Living Single or Life Support <laughs> or her own productions. And you will see multicultural bosses and actors driving the productions and the messages. Dana, welcome back to Audible and take it away. Hi, 
everyone. Good morning. So I will be brief. <laughs> brevity is levity. All right. Um, thank you so much, Don. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Thank you for this company. Um, I really value our partnership. It is wonderful to be here. I'm so excited once again to collaborate with Audible to tell stories that inspire people to be brave, to fight for what is right, and to bring others along with them. Uh, it was great to work with my fellow Newarker, Pia Wilson. Woo! She's amazing. I learned so much during the creation of this project, and we hope that Monumental brings Harriet Tubman's resistance and integrity to people everywhere who really need to hear it. We want people to know, to feel, to understand what was at stake and how incredibly brave Harriet Tubman was. Um, I loved working with Audible and I love working with them to share stories that empower and inspire people. And together we're committed to taking storytelling and black storytelling in particular African-American storytelling, the black experience storytelling, <laughs> to the next level and make a real impact in our communities uh, around the world. And Audible has a true love and care for our hometown of Newark, New Jersey. They've been right here for 15 years and I'm proud to work alongside them on the ground and to raise our voices together for our community. Uh, as a quick side note, I would really like to thank my partner, Shaquem, who's sitting right in front of me. Um, we do a lot of business. We do a lot of different things. When Shaquem called me about this project, he said, Dana, this is a legacy project for you. So none of, not one part of this has been about a dollar, it hasn't been about vanity, it has truly been about history, legacy, home, inspiration to our future, um, young people who will see it. Those of us who are my age and older, who've been through it and are going through it and need just a little bit of inspiration to my uh, future children, generations who will see this to my family members who live right here in Newark, to drive downtown and see this and experience it. To my mother, an art teacher, an artist, who I know is in here somewhere and over this. Thank you for bringing this project to us, Shaquem. Really appreciate this. I learned so much doing this. Um, I'm truly inspired by Harriet Tubman, when I go about my work daily, I'm so exhausted sometimes. And I'm like, at the end of the day, we out, you know? <laughs> but I know tomorrow I'm coming back in to do it again because this work never ends. And the work of changing the world never ends. Um, the work of black women never ends. We just have to do what we have to do, keep pushing. Um, and I also like to thank my father who's here, uh, Lance Owens. Lancelot, who grew up here as well and told me even more stories about the abolitionist movement here in Newark, New Jersey, and was a good friend of Roz's father and family as well. And so we have a lot of history in this town and to see the beauty that you have erected in this monument, <laughs> not a statue. It's gonna be very exciting, so I will be brief and say thank you to Audible, thank you, Don, thank you everyone involved in this project, and thank you, Sha, for making that phone call to make me a part of it. I really appreciate it, thank you so much. It's time to go see it.
thank you to our queen, Queen Latifah, thank you. I can't wait for you guys to get out and see the monument. The moment has come. Uh, it is absolutely stunning. I want to say thank you to everybody who has been a project, part of this project. There are so many people to name. Of course, our mayor, Raz Baraka, Director Fayemi Shakur, our municipal council, Audible, the Newark Museum of Art, Newark Arts, Newark City Parks Foundation. The list goes on and on. Please refer to your program book for all the additional thank yous. In closing, I want to salute General Tubman. I'm going to call her General Tubman and give her a full-on salute for a life of service, for seeing the light and wanting to bring it forth for all to see, for having the faith to see and move forward and see the signs even when you couldn't read them. God's time is always near. He set the North Star in the heavens. He gave me the strength in my limbs. He meant that I should be free. Those are the words of Harriet Tubman. But she also said, we are rooted here. We are rooted here. And they can't pull us up. So with those words, I'd like to invite you all. We're going to file out. Excuse me, folks. We have a, a, a way that we would like to process out of here. So if you could all just pay attention for one moment. We first would like to have the press exit. So can everybody please just uh, sit tight for just one second. Press will exit first, followed by our drummers, and then we're going to exit out row by row because we are going to be led by our drummers to the monument. So press first. Thank you so much for all of our performers here today. Bimpe, our drummers led by Obalaji. Hey, Tree. <laughs> oh, that chorus sounds nice. OK. Press, press. And now we'd like to have our drummers please file out and lead us. And we're going to start with the first rows. Yes.
So tell us, how do you feel about the Harriet Tubman Monument? First of all, I want to thank the mayor, the city, and everybody who put this together. For uh, This is very important for inner cities like this to get some culture. That's what we're missing. Inner cities are missing culture. And I brought my great friends, University of African Dance, uh, Mr. Dixon's son. Go ahead, speak to him. How y'all doing? My name is Nasir Dickerson. We're with Universal African Dance and Drum Ensemble. We're grateful to be here in honor of this prestigious day, honoring one of our legacies who founded uh, the, the, who laid the groundwork for the black people in America and, and made it all possible for all, all of us to be here. This is my mother, Miss Wanda Dickerson, right here next to us, the founder of Universal African Dance and Drum Ensemble. Thank you for having us. And thank you for that wonderful, wonderful performance that you put on for us in the city of Newark. Thank you, thank you so much. Would you like to say? Would you like to say yeah, a couple words? Yeah, just want to shout out to our ancestors. Of course, Harriet Tubman. Like my son said, if it wasn't for those who laid that groundwork, we wouldn't be who we are. To our elders, whose shoulders we stand on, to continue our legacy, to never allow what they built to die. Really excited to be to see this finally open to the public because really it's about having people engage with the work, connect with each other, connect with the history, connect with the stories of the people of Newark. It's a really exciting day. Um, I think they, all the artists that worked on it did an, a phenomenal job and they really showcased Newark, the beauty of black history, African American history in a way that shines a light and allows people to exist within the legacy. So even allowing Newark residents to create tiles that were a part of the experience really elevated it and made it a community development. And I am so looking forward to bringing my younger siblings here to also appreciate the history and also, you know, be a part of the change that's happening so you have voices that come out of the uh, of, of the context and the uh, on top of Queen Latifah's uh, voice we hear five in incredible of uh, black narrators who have about 500 audiobooks between them who will teach and, uh, and 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 guide through the experience I hope there's high school teachers here I hope there's people who provide context and then also there is some technology that's pretty impressive in terms of knowing somebody's there and uh, knowing when the trains going by and other things that are 
you know, they're, they're kind of the, the kind of stuff we do, you know, as an audio company. Um, so this is actually a really big honor, you know, for me, because, you know, for all of us, you know, being in, being part of said uh, community, black community, you know, but it's, um, it's an honor to be up here, you know, playing a f uh, procession, um, you know, and on the follow of uh, Women's Day. It's a, it's, a, it's a really big honor, you know, I'm supporting my mother, my grandmother, as you've seen her, uh, aunts all over New Jersey and all over the globe, you know, it's a really big honor. Um, it's outstanding, it's a hundred thousand times better than I anticipated. Uh, Nina Cook John did an awesome, awesome job. I think that and coupled with the work that Audible did makes this uh, probably one of the better monuments in the entire state of New Jersey. The quality of this monument is something that you will find in the capital city. Uh, today is incredible. I'm overwhelmed with emotion about uh, our ability to cut the ribbon to see this done today.